Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and on behalf of Studio One Expert, I want to welcome you to the Beginner's Guide to Learning PreSonus Studio One Version 3. This series of videos are short videos that are intended to help you get up and running in Studio One Version 3 very quickly. Whether you are brand new to Studio One, coming over from say another DAW, or whether this is the first time you have any experience with any digital audio workstation, this video series will help you get up and running, show you the basic uh, layout of Studio One, the basic functions of Studio One, give you a good foundation so you can start making music in your home studio very, very quickly with no fuss and no muss. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the audio I.O. settings on our audio interface and set up our inputs and our outputs so we have a way to route our audio tracks and instrument tracks and so on and so forth. So let's head on over to the song page here and the easiest way to do this, and there are several ways to get to that page, but the way I like to do it is come up to the Studio One in the menu bar, left click here and uh, go over to Preferences, and that is going to open up our Preferences window. And in future videos, we're going to talk about all these different tabs and what all these things mean and all the different nitty gritty details. But for this example, we're going to go to the audio setup tab and we're going to take a look at our audio device here. Now, I happen to be using a universal audio Apollo. That is my audio interface. Whatever audio interface you have plugged into your computer, it'll say up in here. Now, if you click this triangle over on the right hand side, this will give you a list of all the different uh, audio interfaces that you may have hooked up to your system. So if you have multiple interfaces, you may um, have a different choice here, but you want to choose the one and you may just have one. If you only have one audio interface, choose your audio interface if it doesn't default to that. Okay. And then we'll talk about the device block size and the process precision, and all this at a later date. For now, just leave it at its default setting. Okay, because where we want to go is over to the song setup button. And this is going to bring us to the input and the output tab. So if you can see here, we have inputs and we have outputs. So let's start on the inputs. So depending on your audio interface, which will be listed right here in the top left hand corner, and it will show you all the different inputs that you have available on your interface. And as you can see, I have 32 different inputs available on this uh, Universal Audio Apollo in a variety of different connections, whether it's quarter inch or XLR or uh, light pipe or SPDIF or so on and so forth. Now, depending on your audio interface will depend on how many inputs you have listed here. And as you can see, there's nothing here. There's no input set up. Now, you may have some that it may automatically default to, but this is good that there's none here because we're going to set it up from scratch. So let's say for our example, we want to set up four inputs. I have four XLR inputs on the back of this Universal Audio Apollo, and I want to record a drum kit. So I'm going to do a kick, a snare input, and two overheads. So that would be four mono inputs, okay? That's my uh, maximum amount of XLRs I have on my interface, so let's go with that. So the way we add those four inputs is we can come down here to the Add Mono button because we want those to be mono inputs, or we could add stereo if we chose to, but we're just gonna do four monos right now. So we'll click it once, and as you see, it'll give you input one, and it will default to the first input on your interface, input one. If I click it again, input two, input three, input four. Now. You can move these inputs if you didn't want it to be on the physical input, let's say in this case input one, if we didn't want it to be on the physical XLR mic line input on the, on the Apollo, we want it to say be on input four, we can just hold down left click and we can just drag this over here and just click it into input four. And now input one would be physically on channel four. If that makes sense. I know that sounds confusing because you probably wouldn't do that. You'd probably leave input one on channel one, right? But just to show you, you can click in any one of these boxes and this input could be any physical input that's available on your audio interface. Okay, so we're going to leave it on one. And the same thing with inputs two, three, and four. You can move them around to any one of the physical inputs on your interface. Now, if we don't like the names of these inputs because we want to name them something that makes more sense to us for our example, kick, snare, overhead, left, overhead, right, we can just change the name by double clicking inside of here and typing it in. So let's, let's do that. Okay, and then we can go in here and input three, overhead left, and then input four, overhead right. 
okay? And then we can, now if we say we also, did these were mono tracks, if you wanted to add a stereo input, let's say uh, you, you had a need for that, you can click add stereo and that'll give you a stereo and you can see it automatically defaults to the next available set of inputs, line five and six, and you can see LR left and right because this happens to be a stereo input, but we don't need that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just highlight it and remove it. Okay, so once I've done that now, let's hit apply down here in the bottom right hand corner. So it applies it. Now let's go over to our output tab. So right now it's defaulted to the main outputs, which happen to be one and two. The one and two represent where do I have my studio monitors plugged into? I have it plugged into outputs one and two on my audio interface. But let's say your, imp your speakers are plugged into, I don't know, eight and nine or seven and eight. You can just move it and just click it around. So whatever the physical inputs are on your interface, and that's what your speakers are hooked up to, that's where you wanna choose. So mine's one and two. Now let's say we wanted to, because this is a drummer example, a drum kick snare overhead example. Let's say we wanted to add a headphone mix for that drummer. I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and let's add, because we're on the outputs tab, we're going to have a headphone output. So let's add stereo and a stereo track. And here's sub one. And again, let's say that we're going to send the audio out of my audio interface, the main mix. We're going to send it out to say line three and four, which are the physical outputs on the output of my interface. And every interface is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna use say lines three, line out three and line out four to be my headphone mix. And we're gonna come over here, we're gonna click in here. We're just gonna call this headphones. Okay, I'm gonna show you why this is important in a second. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna check this box here called Q mix. Okay, what this is gonna do, it's gonna set up a headphone mix in our edit in our console view. I'm going to show you that in a second, okay? So we got our main outputs going to one and two. We have our headphone mix going out three and four, okay? And now we're going to go over here and we're going to click apply and then we're going to click okay. All right, so now let's just take a look at our three tracks that we have here. So now that we've set up our inputs on our interface, if we come over to the top of any one of these tracks, these audio tracks and click right here where it says none, this is going to give us now the choice to plug in. What do we want our input to be? So you have kick snare overhead left and right, one, two, three, and four. So we can choose any one of those inputs. Okay. That's why that's where you see this here now that because we labeled them in the, in the IO screen, you can see it labeled here. Okay, same thing with the outputs. Right now, this is called main. So if we had, we only have one set of outputs here except for the headphone mix. Okay, so we got, we routed them going through our outputs. Now, because we set up that headphone output, if you remember, and we click the Q mix box. Okay, what that did, if we click this output tab, you can see over here on the right hand side, see how it's labeled headphones? This is now our, and I'll move it all the way over so you can see it. Here is our headphone output because we, 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 we set this up as a Q-mix. This is the master fader for our headphone output, okay? If we expand our mixer, what you'll see here now is on all the audio tracks, and let's say this happened to be, uh, let's just add one more track here just so uh, I can just uh, go up to track, add track. I'm just gonna add one. Okay, so now we have four tracks here. So let's label these kick, snare, overhead, left, overhead, right. just so you can see this example. And so now we have our kick, our snare, our overhead left and our overhead right track. And you can see each one of these have this thing called Q-mix. And you can see where it says headphones, that now what I can do if I have my headphones plugged into lines three and four going out of my interface, like we set up in our, in our other screen, our IO screen, now I can put in my headphones how much kick I wanna hear in my headphones, how much snare I wanna have in my headphones. Here's the Q-mix level how much of the overheads I want in my headphones, right? And then I have my master headphone control for that headphone. So that's really cool. So because you we click the Q-mix button, that's set up the Q-mix. The Q-mix is nothing more than our headphone mix. Okay, so that's really cool. So if you had a drummer and say a guitar player or a good drummer and a bass player, you can have as much, you can customize the mix for each one of your musicians. You could We could have set up a second headphone output in our outputs tab, one for the drummer, one for the bass player, and then we could have customized how much of each one of these tracks do we want to go to those headphone mixes, which is really cool, right? So that is the basic gist on how you set up your IO for your audio interface in Studio One.
So I hope this video was helpful. For more tips, tricks, concepts, techniques, and training around everything home recording, be sure to head out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And for more information about everything that has to do with Studio One, be sure to go out to studioonexpert.com on a regular basis. It is the one-stop shop for everything PreSona Studio One. And until next time with another video, this has been David Vignola with homerecordingmadeeasy.com, and I will speak to you guys all soon. Take care.